I remember the occasion only too well. It was a lull in the AOE committee meeting proceedings when a well-worn, dog-eared and tattered scrapbook was being hastily passed round from one embarrassed person to the next. It soon became apparently clear why people were quick to release it, for it chronicled in fading aged cuttings and photographs the formative years of the hostess with the mostess's son, a certain Timothy Michael Flint, the only organist I know who, when hearing that Samantha Fox sang in the bar, put his ear to the keyhole. He entered the world on May the 10th, 1964, and is therefore a Taurus. When compared with the size of a bull, his present weight is not so surprising. <laughs> if one is to believe the text in the original Gypsy Petrolingo book of horoscopes, it reads, Confusion in the Zodiac, with Venus entering Mars, Jupiter entering Saturn, and a new ruling body entering Uranus. Despite this painful occurrence, May the 10th was a happy day in the Fleet household. The darkness and gloom that had dogged them for weeks suddenly disappeared and things looked instantly brighter. The roof blew off their home. <laughs> Depressed and suicidal, in sheer desperation, Mrs. Flint phoned the Samaritans, but they hung up on her. I digress. Pausing to swallow another Rennie, I began to thumb through this modern day doomsday book whilst trying to look suitably impressed and hopefully say the right things. I'd seen only one other book in my lifetime that surpassed it for comment, content, my own. While some AOE committee members lined up to use the outside privy, others relaxed in a euphoric mid-afternoon state aided somewhat by liberal glasses of Chateau Belpa, a lively little wine of uncertain vintage with a, a bouquet akin to the lining of Ian Botham's jockstrap. I passed the usual conversational remarks. My, my, he was a big boy for his age. Is that a duck he's holding or is it a trick of the light? I suppose a singular word to describe the young Flint would be cherubic. Look at him smiling at the camera while seated at his first organ. Why his parents never told him he should be blowing into it, I'll never know. But one does hear strange things about Derbyshire country folk and most turn out to be true. What's this? Ah, yes, words penned in the bell for bugle by the local music critic on the occasion of young Master Flint's first public concert. Quote, As an organist, he must have a lot of music in him. Pity none of it emerged last night. <laughs> Turn the page quickly. What more delights await the unsuspecting? A pronto print program. This looks interesting. The North Belpa Women's Spindle Polishing Glee Club sing George Formby. Guest organist, Tom Flood. So that's where it's originating. But what's this? A still smiling to camera Tim Flint wins his first music competition. Once again, the belt of bugle was on hand to record the momentous occasion as Tim holds the cup aloft. Next year he returned and won the matching saucer. Time for another Remy. Thinks, what was in that stew? Another drop of Chateau Belle for certainly Mrs. Fleet. Which reminds me, I must start to remove the varnish from the front door this weekend. Look at this. Prestatin, 1980. Tim Fleet scores at First Organ Festival. If I recall, it was the occupant of Shelley B40, which I also estimated as her bra size. Actually, this is where his meteoric rise to fame commenced. I remember Trevor Daniels leading him away in the direction of the Stuka room. Picture the scene, if you will. 
Trevor vainly tried to place his arms around Tim's shoulders, but succeeded in only reaching his waistline. This posture was quickly dropped, as by now a crowd had tagged along. The lamb had gone to be slaughtered. Onlookers held their breath as the young, even then overweight Tim Flint, prepared his first shot. His arched fingers gracefully rested on the green bays, eye lined up on the cue ball, the stance and body position evenly distributed in true Steve Davis tradition. A hushed silence fell on the room as Tim slowly raised his bat. For Daniels, it was a walkover. His first concert at Prestatin was a memorable one, being summed up in one word, rubbish. <laughs> Perhaps, suggested Trevor, Tim should think of getting another job, like breeding bulldogs. Tim said he thought they did it for themselves. Returning to Belper, undaunted by the comments, and in particular those of one unnamed professional who suggested that Tim had about as much chance of becoming an organist as Madonna saying ouch on her wedding night, he began to practice <laughs> night and day. He soon got fed up of that tune and practiced others. A neighbour asked him if he could borrow the organ one evening. Certainly, said Tim. Do you like music? No, replied the man, I'd just like to get some chopping sleep. <laughs> Tim returned to Prestat in the following year, determined to perform better than ever. Sadly, he found too old age pensioners in Shally B40, so he concentrated on his concert performance. <laughs> it was loud, and that was only his shirt. As a colour coordination, he had about all the grace and charm of a motorway pilot. That colourful debut brought about a resurging interest in hot air ballooning, and to this day, many of Tim Flint's creations can be seen gracefully gliding across the skies, made entirely from his cast-off shirts. Another distinctive trademark is his laugh which has caused at least one unsuspecting person to drop three eggs on the kitchen floor. It's not unknown for him to request overnight accommodation with friends and fans. What some people would do for a cheap organ lesson amazes me. However, this practice has not gone unnoticed by the tax authorities, who have begun to query hotel and guest homes receipts bearing such charming names as Bistro Beasley, Inglenock Ingley, and Shay Cadwallader. In most extra length reinforced beds are hastily constructed, and a special visit to the local Asda is priority for the lady of the house. Time, unfortunately, does not permit a deeper and more far reaching look into the past 23 years but it would be about two years ago, right here at Middleton Towers, that romance began to take its natural course. There came upon the scene a young lady. It's me! <laughs> that simple Wilkshire maid who's come again to Morecambe I brought me belper bottles here and started to uncork them. <laughs> Tim was the apple of me eye. For him there was no other. But then he went away one night, left me and took his mother. <laughs> what, what's Eileen got that I do lack? It can't be eyes so fiery. It must be all the other dates she keeps in her son's diary. Mind you, Tim's not the only chap with whom I've been quite pally. This week seems some activity in my B40 chalet. 
It seems as though I've gone too far. I'm told I'm not a kiddie. It started simply joining hands, then he got out his midi. <laughs> Just a minute. Problems with the organist. Three tolls to blame, else some festival regular, one person who it can't be this year, my little Tony Pegler. By now, you gather I'm distressed, my heart is where the hurt is, I want to know who's done this deed, Tim Flint or Ronald Curtis. <laughs> I didn't get to see his face, despite a light that flashed on. If I knew he wasn't past it, I'd consider Alan Ashton. <laughs> I wonder why the chairman smiles. That I don't like being nosy. No, he'll need all his energy next week when he went rosy. I guess I'll have to spill the beans so I can stop me blushing. For Tim, the panic's over, lad. No offspring, just a cushion. <laughs>